Okay, in this video we are going to use a little bit of calculus to try to find a value of k so that a cubic function has three distinct roots. Um, so let's see what we're talking about. So say we have a cubic function that looks like f of x is 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 8x plus k, and we want this cubic to have three distinct roots. So if you think about the shape of a cubic, um, it can kind of look like this. And if we're going to have three distinct roots, then when I put the x-axis in here, I need to make sure that this situation happens. So if you look at it, what we really need to happen is we need this point, which is the maximum, to um, have a y value that is greater than zero. And then we need this point here, which is the minimum, uh, to have a y value that is less than zero. So we're going to try to force that to happen. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use calculus to figure out the x-coordinates where the maximum and minimum happen. So let's do that first. So we're going to need to find the first derivative of this thing. So f prime of x is going to be equal to, so we're going to use power rule, so I get 2 times the derivative of x cubed is 2 times 3x squared, so that's 6x squared. And then it's going to be plus 4 times the derivative of x squared, so that's 4 times 2x, or plus 8x. And then the derivative of negative 8x is just negative 8. And then k is a constant, so its derivative is 0, so it contributes nothing. Um, so what I want to do is I want to factor this so I can find the critical points, because those are the possible turning points of our graph. So f prime of x is, um, so I'm going to go with 3x and 2x. And then uh, I'm thinking uh, if it's 2x plus 4 and then 3x minus 2. So that should work. Uh, minus 2. And if you want to check it, the x, the middle terms, you get 12x and then minus 4x, so you get 8x. So that definitely works. So the next thing we want to do is we want to find the critical points. So critical points are when the derivative is 0 or undefined, but in this case, the it's a polynomial. So um, the derivative is never undefined. So just equal to 0. And that, you can tell by observation, is going to occur at x equals 2 thirds, x equals negative 2. <coughs> uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a uh, sign chart for this. So it's a sign chart for f prime. I want to put the critical points on it, negative 2 and 2 thirds. Um, and now I'm going to test regions. So you can do this however you like. I like to think uh, that f prime is a quadratic that opens up. So uh, the signs have to go positive, and then negative, and then positive again. And so having done that, uh, if you want, you can add what f is doing. So anywhere f prime is positive, f is increasing. So I'll just draw a little arrow. And then when f prime is negative, f is decreasing, and then again, increasing. And then looking at those, or just thinking of the derivative, or looking at the graph we made of the cubic, we know that um, x equals negative 2 is our maximum that we're going to try to make greater than 0. Um, and at x equals 2 thirds, we'll get the minimum that we're going to try to make less than 0. So we're almost done. So now it goes back to being kind of an algebra problem. So we'll deal with the maximum first. <clears throat> so the maximum occurs at x equals negative 2. So the y value is going to be f of negative 2. So I'm going to take negative 2 and substitute it in. And I get this and just that plus k. And then we said the whole point is that we need this maximum to be greater than 0. So if we do that, um, we end up with 16 plus k is greater than 0, or k is greater than negative 16. So as long as k is greater than negative 16, the maximum will be um, above 0. So uh, that's a good start. And now if we look at the minimum, so the minimum occurs at x equals 2 thirds, so the y value is going to be f of 2 thirds. And so that, if we substitute in, we get uh, 16 twenty sevenths, and then plus 16 ninths, and then minus 16 thirds, and then there's just a plus k. And we need to force this to be less than 0. So this, if we clean it up, we get negative 80 over 27 plus k less than 0. Um, which means that k needs to be less than 80 over 27. So as long as k is less than 80 over 27, um, the minimum is going to be negative. Um, and that's what we need to happen. So, or below zero, the minimum will be below the x-axis. 
So we have this and we have this. If we combine those into one compound inequality, so we get negative 16 is less than k is less than 80 over 27. As long as that's true, um, both the maximum will be greater than zero and the minimum will be less than zero. And that forces the cubic to have two, uh, three distinct roots. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. So you'll run into this type of problem frequently. Um, it's a pretty famous early calculus problem. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.